Today, I want to talk about consolidated accounts and some of the problems they can conceal. However, before we go on, I must remind you that under Hong Kong SFC regulation, we can't make recommendations and none of what follows should be considered to be investment advice. However, if you're thinking of making an investment, we think you should bear in mind the following. Most investors assess a company using the consolidated accounts. And this makes a lot of sense because they reveal the P&L and cash flow that's coming off the group's assets. However, this can be a bit tricky if you've got some partially owned assets that perhaps not everything is owed to the equity holders. However, over time, a whole bunch of rules and conventions have arisen to try and make what's going on clear. The problem is, as soon as you've got rules, you've got a creative accountant that's seeking to abuse them. And it's impossible to come up with a rule for every scenario. And this is why consolidated accounts, even though they've tried to make them clear, can often be used to obscure the business reality. Here are a few examples of some of the problems that can arise. Consolidation of non-fungible companies. Now there is the assumption when you're consolidating companies that assets and cash can be passed around the group to offset liabilities elsewhere if needed. This is not always the case. A good example of this is the Hong Kong listed meat processor WH Group. Now at a consolidated level it looks like a reasonably well-funded, profitable company. The problem is it's actually two companies, a US listed company that's very low margin and highly levered and a very well-off profitable company listed in China. The difficulty and the misleading bit is that you can't very easily move cash from China to the US, so the consolidation is misleading. Consolidation can also hide FX risk. A good example of this is JBS Group listed in Brazil. Now JBS is multiple companies, but they have a core operation in Brazil that historically has had an awful lot of debt, and they have overseas operations that have a certain amount of debt. Now, the share price has soared over the last year because people see the accounts that the company is improving. The problem we have is when we actually look at it closely, you realize that Pilgrim's Pride, the US asset, is starting to do well, but the Brazilian operation and the Brazilian debt is largely unchanged. The difficulty is that JBS needs to reduce its Brazilian debt. The problem is its Brazilian operations don't make much cash. So what it's now doing is borrowing US dollars, transferring them back into Brazil and exposing the company to a lot of FX risk. However, when you consolidate the accounts, it's hard to see this change in risk because the debt levels stay the same. Another way that the consolidated accounts can be misleading is when companies start to buy and sell assets. And we have two examples of this. The first, GE. They've decided to spin off their operating unit, Baker Hughes, as a separate company, and they've already started that process. However, instead of moving those assets to being held as an investment and available for sale, they've kept consolidating them. Now, we think this is because if you strip those assets and cash out, the core operations look far worse and cash flow looks to be really limited. More importantly, they'd have to book a multi-billion dollar asset impairment. Ironically, they even started to talk about booking revaluation gains if the JV went ahead. The problem is the EU said no, it can't go ahead, and so the assets, liabilities and losses had to come back on balance sheet and expose the fiction that the company was actually turning around and improving. We think consolidated accounting can be at its most misleading when people start to think about credit metrics. A good example of this is Bombardier, which is now essentially two business, a train manufacturing business and a plane manufacturing business. And for years, the company has been producing consolidated accounts and getting people to focus on the consolidated cash flow. The problem is that a few years ago, they sold off a large minority stake in that train business, which is where most of their cash flows come from. Now, today, the company has its own debt covenants and cash cannot be upstream to the parents without the minority's approval. This becomes a problem because or nearly all the debt is being issued by the parent. And we think credit investors are taking on far more credit risk than they imagine. These are just some of the problems that are concealed by consolidated accounts. If you'd like to know more, please visit our website or send us an email. Alternatively, if you'd like to keep up to date with our research, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for your time.